Here we go. This is another clash, head-to-head -head video. Think Sting and Hollywood Hogan in 1997. Two superstars going up against each other. And here, our 200th video on the Dice Tower. I'm Brian Drake, your host. I don't know if you'd call it a host, but anyway. Taking a look, 200 videos now. We've been doing videos for the Dice Tower, and I'm excited to do it on one of my favorite topics, these versus videos, where we take two games and we go head-to-head, -head, two similar games, typically two games that I very much like, and we see which one comes out on top. I will give you a definitive answer at the end of this of which of these two games is the winner. That would be Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle-Earth versus Mansions of Madness, second edition. Now, one caveat before we get into this, because we're going to go top to bottom. We're going to do the art, we're going to do the miniatures, we're going to do the app itself, how it plays, we're going to do the layout of the app, the, the things that the app brings that the uh, in both games that are different. We're going to talk about the user interface, uh, what that looks like, how the experience goes, and then at the end of this, I'm going to give you a definitive answer between which one of these I really like the best, even though you might be comparing like a 97 to a 98. Either way, I'm going to give you an answer. Now, I would like to clarify one more thing since I've reshot this uh, intro a couple times now since I posted the Lord of the Rings review yesterday, which you can go check out, by the way, on the Dice Tower. Um, we're comparing a couple different things now we're comparing mansions of madness as it is currently right three big box or two big box expansions and three small box expansions versus journeys in middle earth which is currently just the base set right so think about this there have been 19 missions for mansions of madness a lot of stuff has grown with the game like the base set versus the base set would have been a i guess a more fair comparison but as it is, when you buy Mansions of Madness, there are a lot of things already baked into the cake because of the downloadable scenarios and things like that. So I thought it would still be a good idea to compare what the game is today for Mansions versus Journeys of Middle-Earth, even though I fully imagine there are going to be new mechanics and things that will grow the Journeys of Middle-Earth game. So let's take a look right now at these two games. And one more thing. Why did I pick these two instead of adding... Uh, Imperial Assault or Descent into these. The reason is because these two games were made with the app in mind, whereas Imperial Assault and Descent got an app added later. These two had the app in mind from the start. So let's take a look right now which one comes out on top. Journeys of Middle Earth versus Mansions of Madness, second edition. All right, let's talk user interfaces first. Your direct user interface would be the fact that you have a character card over here in Lord of the Rings. Uh, has your different traits on it, things like might, wisdom, agility, spirit, and will, as well as your special power. A little lore, a little background, and a little suggested starting stuff on the back here. Uh, you can pick from up to seven, six characters so far. Um, this is brand new, so that's obviously gonna expand. Mansions has <laughs> a whole lot. I don't even know how many it is. Same thing though. Your uh, your skills are listed over here, your health, your uh, sanity are there, your special power there, and then on the back, everyone has a story so far thing. So very similar. Um, the art's nice. I love the fact that they're done in style, right? Like they all look like they, the style just kind of fits. Although this one almost looks like it's a, an online game in a good way. You know, it's like it's trying to be an RPG, whereas this one looks like you pulled it out of a filing cabinet and uh, someone bled all over it, right? So that's your direct user interface there. Now your sub, your way that's represented would be the miniatures here. So we've got Silas Marsh over here for mansions. You've got uh, Elena for uh, Lord of the Rings. I haven't finished painting Lord of the Rings yet, so it's unfair to compare based on paint, obviously. But the mansions and the style of uh, art is very similar. Uh, the very similar miniatures, I mean, to these later figures. You'll notice that the proportions are similar to these characters as opposed to some of the earlier mansions characters had smaller proportions. There's Gimli right there rocking that big axe. So that's the miniatures, that's the user interface. Now one of the things we're going to talk about now would be also how you play on the game itself. These tiles are what's going to form your world map. You're going to play in kind of a more zoomed out version of Lord of the Rings, whereas in mansions you have these very square tiles that fit together in you know, a literal mansion or a little house. And uh, it could be a shop or something like that or a museum. They're all gonna fit together and you're gonna build out this wonderful world. They're all square-sided. There's no weird-sided tiles. Um, this is good and bad because now that there's so much to this game, it's really hard to find sometimes the right tile that you're looking for. But you're gonna put walls and doors and uh, extra things you know, to block. You know, like you can put... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, debris in the way, which 
to be fair, I've never used um, the debris or anything like that, but this is a lot more straightforward looking. It looks kind of like it's uh, got some inspiration from the old school uh, the trailer house on the hill back in the day, you know, old school, old school. Uh, I wouldn't say that, you know, obviously second edition looked like, the first edition looked like this as well. I really like that aesthetic, but I like this too, because it kind of gives the feel of you're playing an RPG, like an old school uh, Super Nintendo or PlayStation RPG. So I do like that feel. Uh, that is what that's gonna look like. Now, Lord of the Rings does have one other aspect that Mansions does not have. It has a tactical board as well. Notice this is just a five space board. It's grass on the front, mountain on the back. Certain things will be added to this to, you know, to give you a certain benefit like a fire pit or uh, walls and things like that. So it makes a smaller tactical board, which you have to think a little bit more carefully about your tactical decisions. Now, fighting we can discuss in the app, but basically in Lord of the Rings, it's done based on your items. Uh, the actual skill you check is based on the items you have. So like Gimli's axe will tell you to use his might. So you could actually check Gimli's might number or Bilbo's might number. Uh, or some of them might tell you to use your agility. For instance, Legolas, his bow tells you to use his agility skill, which is a four, which is way better than his might. So it's really nice that it lets you choose that. Whereas in Mansions, it's a little bit more random because it's more like you're playing Call of Cthulhu, the RPG, right? So you click, hey, I have a sharp object here. And instead of it saying, all right, deal this much damage or do this, it says, you, you know, you pivot backwards and jump out of the way of the monster's attack and your knife falls out of your hand, but quickly you grab it and sling it towards the monster. Check your agility instead of your might. So it's not always going to be the same based on the skill you think it should be. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more narrative based, whereas Lord of the Rings is a lot more straightforward in that. So that is everything for the most part as far as uh, interface goes. There's one more important factor. The interface would be the decks of cards. Everybody as a character in Lord of the Rings will get a deck of cards, roughly around 15 cards. You'll get it based on your character. So if you're playing Gimli, you'll get some Gimli specific cards based on your role. Now this is something that Lord of the Rings only has and the Mansions does not have. You're gonna choose a role. It might be Guardian, might be Captain, might be Pathfinder, might be Hunter. You're gonna get some cards specific to you uh, in your role and you can move up in experience and buy more of these cards and get better cards uh, as your role goes. So you're gonna get some basic cards, one, two, three, four, five, six that everyone has. You're gonna get some weapons cards. Uh, they're not part of your deck, but they go to your side. And then you're also gonna get your, again, your character and your, your class cards. There are two things to look for in these cards. First of all, when doing a skill check, the only thing that matters are these two symbols up here. This is a success, and this is essentially, it mentions the clue token. Uh, this is your inspiration tokens. You're gonna spend those to turn those into successes. The rest of the card is irrelevant when using it this way. So you'll have your deck of cards there. It'll say check four. You'll flip over four cards. If you have enough successes in those four cards, boom, there you go, you succeeded. Or you do enough damage, or your weapon will tell you what to do based on the number of successes. So. It's very interesting with that. Um, but the other thing you do is at the beginning of the game, or the beginning of the round, you're gonna rally, uh, do the rally phase, and you're gonna scout some cards. When you scout, you're gonna deal off whatever the number is. If it's scout two, you're gonna take two cards off. You're gonna look at them. You can choose to prepare one of the cards, which means stick it under your card and use its text ability later. But then you can also, if you don't want either of them, you can do this, but if you just choose to do one, you get to take the remaining card and set it either on the top of the deck or on the bottom of the deck. So if it's something that's really not that great down here, but you know it's a success, you can go ahead and load it up and be ready with the success for the very first skill check you do. Whereas Mansions of Madness, you're rolling those lovely eight-sided dice with successes, clues, and fails, and that's it. That's the huge difference in interface, whereas there's this big deck of cards over here that gives you this wonderful, deep experience of playing a card game inside of a board game. Mansions is a lot more straightforward, it's a lot more narrative driven, like you're playing an RPG. Now, at the end of the day, these are both app driven games, so I'd be remiss if I did not show you the actual apps themselves. Both of them do, they, they all have, you know, uh, enemy miniatures. These are more straightforward because they're rounded bases that you put flags with instead of those big black Arkham Horror bases like Mansions of Madness has. So let's look at the apps, see which one you should get based or what the apps do differently, what they do similar right now. So here we are with the Lord of the Rings app. You can download this on your iPad, your iPhone. Uh, you can get it in the Steam store. Just nice to have, right? So you first of all go to your collection. This is all that's available now. You have the box set, the core set, and then you have this one coming soon, which would be the Villains of Eriador. Whereas in Mansions, we'll see in a little bit, there's a ton of different stuff. Um, as far as the app goes itself, 
this one versus the Mansions app. We're going to look at them back to back instead of cutting back and forth just because it's easier. You'll notice that there's new game selection. This one's a lot more similar to Descent and Imperial Assault. There's the campaign you pick currently. There's just the one. So it's just Bones of Arnor. You can select the difficulty. You can pick either really hard or, you know, easy. <laughs> it's normal mode. Select the save slot. So you can have one, two, three, four, five games at a time on this. So uh, this is our five player game. This is our two player game here. Uh, let's pick a new one just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like as a new game. Pick your hero. So let's pick Aragorn. Barevor and Bilbo, select starting items. It'll tell you what you get. It's, so this is your starting gear that you get right here. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to lift it up here you can see. Uh, travel garb, um, travel garb, cloak for armor. Then you have the weapons there, staff, dagger, sword, and then uh, Aragorn gets a banner as well. So then you'll go in, you'll name the party. So you'll name it something like uh, Party. Oh, that's super creative, right? We'll begin. Gives you some backstory. I'm gonna skip this in case you wanna see it spoiler free later. Embark. This is chapter one. There are obviously multiple chapters here to look at. We're gonna click continue, chapter one. This is Shadow and Eriador. You can either save and quit here or continue. The reason you can save and quit here is because you can go back into the map uh, and pick a different mission if you have one unlocked. Uh, this is the campfire section, so this is where you pick your roles. You have burglar, guardian, musician, captain, pathfinder, hunter. We're going to go with what they suggest. We're going to go captain. We're going to go music. pathfinder. She's a she's a hunter. And then we're going to go burglar, obviously. Burglar. It's going to tell you what to do. It's going to set everything up. Gazing the palantir. That stuff's cute. So. Start here, I'll show you what the map looks like here in a second. It'll start setting it up. You'll get 302A, you'll sit it out here, just like it shows. Symbol wise, you put it in the same orientation, it's easy to do, so boom, boom, just like that. It'll continue to tell you to place tiles out, place scouts out, you put your heroes out there, boom. There's a corroded lock, you'll put that token out there, boom, same as that. Same sort of thing happens. It's going to unlock the board. It's going to open everything up. It plays exactly the same way as mansions. You're going to keep putting out these tiles. The only big difference I really want to show you are those tokens right there. The exploration tokens, unlike the site tokens like in Mansions of Madness, these are in fact, there we go. So these are exploration tokens. If I click this, anytime you move into that tile, and again, I'm not gonna put those all out right now, but anytime you move into the tile with that token, you can click Explore, and it's a free action. It happens, it might give you a test to do, it might just tell you about it. It says discard the expiration token and gain an inspiration. That's where you get those tokens that you can spend for successes. Everybody has a threshold right there along with their wound and their fear threshold. So it's gonna open up all the new stuff here. And we're basically trying to find us a band of brigands. So we'll just keep doing that for just a second because I wanted to show you, now let's see when it shows you some enemies on here. So here's the shadow phase. You have a threat meter up here at the top, much like the Lord of the Rings, the card game. Once this fills up, you fail the mission. Now, if you fail, though, you continue with the actual mission, big campaign, even though you failed this first mission. So here we go. We've got some ruffians that have been placed on the board. You can check out what enemies have right here. It's a set of ruffians. You put two miniatures out there. So it's not two different ruffians. It's one ruffian, essentially, with 10 health. Now, as you go to attack them, you, click, you can click the status effects you're gonna give. So if you had pierce and they had armor, you would see it, it would be grayed out and it would add to their total. You click pierce and that's gonna chew through their armor. Um, they all do different things right here. Smite, cleave, sunder, stun. Uh, you put the amount of hits you have and the more you get, it will carry over since it is a group of enemies. We'll go ahead and apply that. Apply 11 hits. Boom, they're dead. Pull them off the board. Gain inspiration typically. Sudden movement draws you, you get lower, blah, blah, blah. So that is how everything pretty much works in this game. There is nothing else different than that other than there's some boss fights that are gonna add some special effects to certain enemies. You're gonna use those tactical maps too. Let's look right now at the Mansions of Madness app and see how it compares right now. So Mansions is a lot more story-based. You're not doing a campaign, you're doing all one-offs. And there are currently, gosh, how many are there? 19 available uh, at this moment. So let's start with the murder on the Stargazer Majestic. We're gonna select our investigators. Boom, let's go with Ash Campede, Agatha, Agnes, uh, and then uh, Akachi and Carson. We'll gain starting items. Now this is random, it's gonna give you the items to pick as opposed to these in Lord of the Rings having these kind of starting items. You'll divvy those up how you want them. 
uh, unless it says you get Duke. Everybody starts with a certain amount of clues, get a nice little bit of uh, lore, then you get a wonderful red story scenario. We'll skip that though, just in case you want to watch that later. So, again, tiles get laid out. It's going to tell you where to go. I want to get to a couple different things here and show you some interesting points of view about mansions that make it a little bit different than Lord of the Rings. But uh, essentially, we're going to be doing the same sort of stuff. Uh, one thing to make it different is down here, you can check the actual uh, record of what you've been doing. So you can see the message log of everything that's happened thus far in case you miss something. Save and quit, end game. If someone dies here, if someone if to set a fire, put a fire out, you do that. Uh, well, let's resume, and I'll come back and show you a few neat things. So here's what I love about Mansions of Madness. There are puzzles in the game. And the old Mansions of Madness first edition had actual cardboard puzzles you would pass out to each other. But this one, it's all done in the app. So now we're trying to connect the power from here to here. Uh, this is gonna be random, so uh, there's no point if I solve it. It's not really gonna hurt the story. You can rotate these. They all count as moves though. So when you're doing these, uh, you do it based typically on the skill it tells you to check. So if it's your lore, you'll do it based on that. So we'll rotate, uh, sorry. Rotate this down. I'm not gonna try to beat this puzzle right now because I just, I'm not. And uh, I just wanna see though how long it will take. Um, just kinda quickly zooming through it, not really trying to get that. So go across here, boom, power is done. There you go. Now some of them are a lot harder. There are several different types of puzzles, but this is what sets the game apart. And that's really what I wanna show you there. Because Mansions is not so much about combat, this one probably will not have much combat until way later in the mission. So uh, when you fight, you do fight based on certain skills. The enemies will show up down here, uh, just like Order of the Rings does. Uh, let's see, throw that back to here. When you can fight though, it'll say evade or fight. You'll do the same thing. You'll do whatever skill it tells you to check. You'll roll the dice, enough successes, will do a certain amount of damage. This is not a fighting game, it's an investigating game. So you'll notice the difference alone uh, just in that. So that is the major difference between Mansions and Lord of the Rings right there. So at the end of the day, which one of these two games comes out on top? That's really the question you've all been wondering. <sighs> Both are phenomenal. Both are fantastic games. Both have so many things going for them. First of all, let's talk about uh, the fact that we are going to come down to a definitive answer for me. We're also going to give you one for Carla. Some of you have already started to smell a cop out right there. But we'd like to give a definitive answer for me on which one of these I prefer uh, if I had to choose both. Which, spoiler, I don't. I have both of them and they're both staying in the collection. But for those of you who say, nope. I'm only going to have one of those, or I only enjoy this property, or I'm really interested in that sort of game. I just don't want to have too many of the same type of game. So art, it's, I mean, it's Fantasy Flight's art. We know their art team. We know what's going on with that. Uh, as far as the components themselves, pretty similar, right? Now, I would say that the, it's hard because the tiles in the Mansions of Madness games, they look fantastic. All the art on the, uh, you know, all the different locations, whether you're in a library, a study, some cultic layer, they, they all look fantastic, right? Now the world map tiles do look good in Lord of the Rings, but because you're zoomed out so far, you kind of lose a little bit of the detail, you kind of lose a little bit of the wonder of those tiles themselves, unless you look really close for detail. So um, I will say that we're gonna give the win there to Lord of the, uh, sorry, to Mansions of the Madness for a presentation of the actual tiles themselves. Let's talk plastic miniatures. Now this is a key opponent of contention because I painted both of them. As we've almost painted all of Lord of the Rings. However, this is something I understand. It comes from kind of the, the old days of the Arkham Horror files, and it's one of those things where you can use these bases for the figures you've already bought and pre-painted, or the ones you painted from other games. I can't. I just don't like those big plastic black bases with the tiles you slip in the bottom. I'm aware that it's meant to where you don't have to use the tokens. You could use plastic miniatures instead. I just don't like those. In fact, I don't use them. I typically just put the miniature out there of the monster on the board without that black base, right? So uh, miniatures for Lord of the Rings are gonna take the win on this one. Um, as far as the, the style of the miniatures, they're kind of in that newer Fantasy Flight style with the more exaggerated features. You know, the heads are a little bit bigger, hands are a little bit bigger, uh, kind of more exaggerated for painting in mind, where some of the earlier uh, Mansions of Madness figures were kind of more traditionally proportioned. Look at Dexter Drake versus uh, the dude with the uh, Seamus, what Seamus, I can't remember the dude's name, the Irish guy with the glass bottle in his hand. Look at the difference in those two miniatures and their proportions and you'll see it. Um, 
So the wind goes to Lord of the Rings there as far as miniatures themselves. Let's talk about the actual mechanics of the gameplay themselves. Which one do we enjoy more? I feel like you're always getting to do something over here. Where in mansions, unfortunately, some of those times your, your turns feel a little bit wasted by, oh, crud, I just had to spend my whole turn getting here and now I can't do anything else. Uh, this one fixes that by the fact that you can move, stop your movement, do something, and finish your movement. I love that you're not wasting that extra space of movement, unlike over here, which one of the characters, in fact, the character I just mentioned, I believe, has that power. It's a special power of that one character. So uh, mechanics are streamlined over here. Combat is really great over here. Uh, I like the combat in mansions as well. I feel like you're always constantly getting actions and th you know items and things. It's not a fighting game. It's an investigation game. So combat wins over here in Lord of the Rings. However, the rest of the mechanics themselves, for instance, puzzles and things like that, definitely goes to mansions. I love the idea of puzzles and mysteries and actually having to solve certain things based on the missions that come out. Now, we are only one campaign into the Lord of the Rings, so there might be time for them to add things in like puzzles, for them to add things in like passwords and things like that. Um, it's possible, but it's definitely right here for the win on that. If you like actual mechanics besides combat, Mansions of Madness all day is going to win. Now, at the end of the day, the total package, the Lex Luger, or Buff Bagwell for some unknown reason why he started going by that as well, but the total package, the Lex Luger here, which one are you going to get? At the end of the day, when it all comes down to because both apps play the same way, We've done art, we've done presentation, we've done all these things. Which one of these are you going to pick up at the end of the day? Which one is my win, my preference? <sighs> huh. At the end of the day, I, if you force me to say, hey, we're going to play one of these two games, and I'm having to give you an answer right now. Well, this just changed on the fly. <sighs> I was I was honest, I was going to say, and I even mentioned it a second ago when I, when I started this segment, but... Uh, I, I was going to say Lord of the Rings, but I think still at the end of the day, I've got to go with Mansions if I have to pick one of these because I love, now I love Tolkien, but I love Lovecraft and I love the feeling that this game gives you over here, Mansions of Madness. It's just done so well. So at the end of the day, my win and Carla's win both is going to go to Mansions of Madness. Now, if you're not into the Lord of the, or to the Lovecraft universe, 100% get Lord of the Rings over Imperial Assault, over Descent, just because the streamlined mechanics of the whole card game thing, the fact that it is the card game put into it. Now, I do like that better than Mansions, obviously. But at the end of the day, the card game itself is not enough, Just it's almost enough to just put it up over the edge, over Mansions. But at the end of the day, i got to go with my gut. i got to go with my pick is mansions of madness second edition i'm brian drake here on the latest retro on the dice tower make sure to follow me on twitter instagram at the latest retro and until next time we'll see you also let me know what more games you'd like to see in this versus series because i do enjoy this even if it is in these weird camera angles so much for watching the dice tower videos find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com you can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.